have you back at this channel once again don't forget this channel is zion tutor where we bring solutions to difficult questions in your physics chemistry or further mathematics both of our x syllabus and cambridge syllabus please if you are new to this channel don't forget to press that subscribe button and help us to share this to your loved ones that you think that this channel can be of help to them but today we want to talk about kinematics that's in physics we want to talk about kinematics today and under that kinematics we want to look at what we call motion under gravity motion under gravity is it motion under gravity we use this question to discuss a few concepts that can help us to tackle any question that we have under this motion under gravity now if you look at this question it's saying a ball is projected vertically upward that means under motion under gravity, we have two types of motion. We have an upward motion and we have a downward motion. But this question is talking particularly about an upward motion. You can see that a ball is projected vertically upward. So it's talking an upward motion there. From a top of a tower, that means the ball is not projected from the ground. It's from the top of a tower and that tower is 20 meter high. And the speed at which the ball is projected is 5 meter per second. So we are given to find the maximum height reached by the ball from the ground. Time when it passes its main position. The speed of the ball just before hitting the ground. And the time taken by the ball to reach the ground. So we are going to solve this. But before we lay hands on this question, let's talk about a few concepts under motion, under gravity. A few concepts that we need in solving any question that we see under motion, motion under gravity. So the don't forget I say motion under gravity. We are dealing with two types of motion. One is upward, and the second one is downward. And we get this concept from our equation of motion. Don't forget from equation of motion. Of motion. Our first equation of motion is saying v equals to u plus at, where your v is the final velocity, your u is the initial velocity, a is the acceleration, and time and t is our time. Also, we have v squared equals to u squared plus 2as. Here, s is our distance, we can use x or we can use h. And the third one is s equals to ut plus half at squared. This is our equation of uniform motion. Uniform motion. These are equation. So from this equation of uniform motion, we get the concept behind upward motion and downward motion. Now, when we say upward motion, that means something is projected up like this. And once something is projected up, or just have that imagination, I say you project something up and it's not coming down. The ball will continue to grow to a point that you will not see it again. So that means for every upward motion, what you are saying, the final velocity is equals to zero. And since it is upward, it's negating gravity, our acceleration because to minus g. So having this, if you substitute this, v equals to zero and a equals to minus u so our equation of uniform motion we have an equation for an upward motion so that means if you substitute v equals to zero and a equals to minus g so the first equation we have there you have your u equals to gt in the second equation if you substitute it to this equation so that means i have u square equals to 2gs and the third equation we be that x equals to ut minus half gt squared. That's for upward motion. Now for downward motion. That means when something is coming down. Let me say for example, a mango from a mango tree is coming down. That's an example of a downward motion. Now for downward motion. This is the constraint for downward motion. You have your final because when that mongo or the object is coming down when it's reached down that means the initial velocity becomes zero 
and our a equals to g since the motion is coming down is obeying gravity if we substitute this into the equation of our motion so that means the first one we have is just v equals to gt the second equation is v squared equals to 2gs and the third equation is s equals to half g t square if you substitute this into these three equations that means for every upward motion these are the equation that holds and for every downward motion these are the equation that holds no having known this concept now we can now go back to the question and answer that question please don't forget these are the equation that holds for your upward when you hear a ball is projected upward these are the equation that holds when you hear a ball is coming down that means these are the equation that holds for it because the idea behind this motion under gravity is when we understand motion upward and downward motion and what we call horizontal motion we'll be able to tackle any question that comes under what we call a projectile motion with this few concept that we have learned today let's now go to the question and tackle that question let's go back to the question again now we are given that the ball is projected vertically from the tower. Let me say this is the tower. And that tower is 20 meter high. Now when you project the bus, see something is coming. No, this is the top of your tower. Now the ball comes down. This is the, this is the, your ground. This is the top of your tower. Now the ball is projected with an initial velocity of 5 meters per second. Let's say the maximum height reached by the ball before it begins to come down. Let's say it is h. Don't forget the distance here from here, from the top of the tower to the ground is also 20 meters. And now if ball is projected and it's come here, at this point, this is part of what we call an upward motion. Now, if the ball is coming down, that means this question is tapping both upward and downward. From this point to here is upward motion. And the point above begins to come down, that's a downward motion. But the first question is saying that maximum height reached by the ball from the ground. We know the height from the ground, that means the height of the tower to the top of the tower to be 20. So now, to get H now, when we get h we now add it to this 20 we get the total height from the ground now upward motion we have velocity and don't forget our g which is constant is 10 meter per second square acceleration due to gravity now for our upward motion don't forget h here is also the same thing as distance now we have velocity initial velocity which is 5 meter per second and we want to get the height or you say s it's also distance so don't forget we have what we call u square equals to 2 g s we can replace our s as h here now because they are the same distance the same unit now that means we have 5 square equals to 2 times 10 h so that means my h equals to 25 over 20 and that's 1.25 meter so that means the maximum height from the ground let me see that's your capital h it just be 1.25 meter plus 20 meter and that total is 121.5 meter that is our maximum height reach by the ball from the that means from this ground to this maximum height that is our this side. now the b part is saying that the time when it passes its mean position now on a normal day when you project a ball from the top of a tower, that means the ball has to come back to its mean position from where it was projected. That means the time it takes the ball to reach here before going down. That's the time we are asked for that question B now. I say time when it passes its mean position. Now, don't forget one thing. The time it takes the ball to get to the maximum height is the same time it takes the ball to come down to its mean position. That means when we know the time it gets to get to this maximum mile, you can just multiply it by 2 and get the time to reach its mean position. Now, how do we get that? We have our U, you see, 5 meter per second for an upward motion. Don't forget our, and we still have our G, 
to be 10 meter per second square. Don't forget the first equation that says u equals to gt. So I can know the time by saying it's 5 over 10, and that's 0 0.5 seconds. Now the time is now take to reach its main position. It just 0 0.5 times 2, and that will give us 1 seconds. Now the third part of the question The third part of the question is saying the speed of the ball just before hitting the ground. Now, how do we get the speed? Now, just before hitting the ground, that means this ball has reached its maximum height and is coming down again. The ball has reached its maximum height and is coming down. That means it's obeying a downward motion. Don't forget the total height from that maximum height to the ground is this age is 21.5 meter. And don't forget our g is still 10 meter per second square. Now it's obeying downward motion now. And we want to get the speed at which it's coming down. The speed of the ball just before hitting the ground. Don't forget in equation of a downward motion. You have your h equals to our v square equals to 2gs. Now we can replace s as h here. That means v square equals to 2gh. So my v will now be square root of 2 times 10 times the h here is 21.5. That means my v will be square root of, if we multiply that, will be 425. And that means my v here will now be equals to 20.61 meter per second. That is the velocity and it's last part of the question that says that time taken by the ball we are still using since we know the total height from the maximum height the d the d part now we still know the maximum height to be 21.5 meter and we still know our g to be 10 meter per second square don't forget for downward motion your s is half g t square the time it take time taken by the ball to reach the ground. Time taken. Don't forget the ball is projected. It's for reach a maximum height, and the time it takes that ball to reach the maximum height. Let me say that our t one. Don't forget we have calculated zero point five seconds. Now from the maximum height down. Now that's the time we want to calculate here. Let me represent it as t two. This T1 is the time it takes the ball to reach that maximum height. Now, my T2 here is the time it will take the ball from the maximum height to the ground. So, if we get T2, we add it to the T1, we know the total time taken by the ball to reach the ground. Now, here I can replace it as my H equals to half GT square. So, that means my 21.5. We know G is 10. Half of 10, that's 5T square. So, my T square will just be square root of t square will just be 21.5 over 5 and that will give me 4.25 and that means my t equals to square root of 4.25 and that should give me around 2.06 seconds no time to reach the ground now We now be T1 plus T2, and that's 0 0.5 plus 2.06, and that will give us 2.56 seconds. That is the solution to that question. See that question combines both your upward motion and your downward motion. The second aspect and our kinematics that we want to look at today is horizontal motion. The first one we look at is no is what we call motion under gravity that consists of both horizontal motion. I'll be sorry, our upward motion and our downward motion. And the second part we want to look is horizontal motion, upward motion, downward motion, and this horizontal motion is the collection of these two things that makes our what we call a projectile motion so any day you want to treat a projectile motion that means we need to first come back to our what 
upward downward motion and this horizontal motion now horizontal motion is a very simple concept here but let's read the question i will explain a few concepts under it that will help us or guide us in solving any question that we see under this horizontal motion it says from the top of a building 20 meter high a ball is projected or so for every horizontal motion this is what you will see is projected horizontally horizontally because it's an horizontal motion is projected horizontally it's just like having let me say this is a a building or a tower and you want to project a ball let me say this is a ball here you project it and the ball is moving horizontally before it begins to fall down that's an horizontal motion when you project a ball on this tower and the ball begins to move before it begins to what come down that's what we refer to as horizontal motion you will see part of the horizontal motion we have what we call a downward motion there in that horizontal motion so for every horizontal motion these are the keywords you see a ball is projected horizontally if the line joining the point of projection to the point where it hits the ground makes an angle 45 degree with the horizontal then the initial speed of the ball now in tackling this question let's just go and understand a few concepts under what we call an horizontal motion now let's say we have a surface this is a tower and the ball is here is projected on this tower it begins to move before you know when it gets to this point that ball begins to fall down like this and that ball as the ball is moving horizontally now it's moving with what we call initial velocity or horizontal velocity ux now don't forget this tower has its own height the height of the tower and the ball is coming down with an horizontal velocity this is the ground now the distance the ball cover from here to this point is what we refer to as range we use it r range r is what we call range it's not horizontal range in our projectile motion but in this horizontal motion we just call it range and the velocity at which this ball is projected horizontally we call it horizontal velocity which is us and this is the height now these are the key points or the key few formulas we need under our horizontal motion the range is just like the distance also it's what we call ux multiplied by the time it takes the ball to fall ux multiplied by t don't forget under our normal velocity say your velocity u is distance over time the distance instead of using d we have changed it to range and this is horizontal velocity now if you see if you cross multiply our range is just what horizontal distance times time and the height of this tower don't forget this thing is coming down downward motion do we still remember from our downward motion that h is equals to half g t square so these are the two key formula you have under what we call your horizontal motion for every horizontal motion this formula is able to tackle that thing now if you now go back to the question that from the top of a building let's say this is our building now 20 meter high that means the height of this building is 20 meter a ball is projected horizontally if the line joining the line of projection the point of these are point of projection that's the line so the point where it hits the ground, this is the point where it hits the ground, makes an angle 45 degree. It's just like we are drawing something like this to the ground. Makes an angle 45 to the ground. This is our ground. Our here is what we call our range. We are now told to find now we are given that g equals to 10 meter per second square we are now told to find our 
initial velocity that's horizontal velocity ux now if you see this diagram it represents a right angle triangle and we can use our so to to get the range here this opposite over adjacent and what relates opposite and adjacent together that's tan so that means opposite 20 over adjacent range equals to tan 45 as we all know tan 45 is 1 that means my range here is equals to 20 meter now i know my range i need to get time i'm looking for my us so from this since i know the height of the tower h equals to 20 and the formula is half gt squared so i can say 20 equals to half my g is 10 so that would be 5 t squared so that means t squared equals 4 from there i can get my t as root 4 and that will give me two seconds so i know time i know r i can get my us so that means my ux don't forget r equals to ux multiplied by t what's my r 20 us that's what you are looking for times the time the time here now is what two so my ux is equals to 20 over 2 and that my the velocity at which the ball is projected is what 10 meter per second we appreciate you for sticking with us this video but please if you have any question regarding this topic or any topic in your physics math or further math go to the comment section and drop it please also don't forget to subscribe and help us share this content to people that you know will be a benefit to thank you